teacher was so correct when he said in one of his writings, we never know the love of a parent till we become parents ourselves. I'm living testimony to that. To Linda McFarlane, the dear caregiver and friend, who she loved with all of her heart, because Linda also was a caregiver to her daddy, who be deceased her mom almost four years ago. Linda, we say thank you. So, our eldest sibling, the venerable, charismatic, enigmatic Marina. On behalf of all of us, we want to thank you for demonstrating through filial affection to mom as you give up your own home to provide a crucial time the necessary support, the necessary support. I want to thank you as you now assume the position as matriarch of our family. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 22, it is written, He who finds a wife finds a good thing. In this regard, I wish to thank my wife, Joanne, for agreeing to open up our home to my parents and also for assisting in the caring of my mother in times of my absence abroad when no one else was available. Unfortunately, Joanne is not here today because our son had dental surgery and at six years old, the pain is extremely excruciating. Reverend Mohammed, my mother would also have wanted me to use this occasion of a grand farewell to thank her beloved Church of the Open Bible, of which she was a foundation member long before this edifice was constructed in the days of Drill Hall. We thank you for supporting our mother for all of these long years. Dorothy Charles Mummy, Dorothy, or dear mother, grandmother, great grandmother, great great grandmother, auntie, among other adjectives we could use to describe her, had the good innings. Her life was a labor of love. But at every juncture, on each occasion, she did what was right and she set the tone for us all to follow. I stand here recognizing the truism of the words of Abraham Lincoln who said, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my mother. Dear mother, you have gone but will never be forgotten. In drafting this religion this morning, I recall the words of the Greek philosopher Plato, who said, You have left, you have not left us riches, but you have bequeathed to us the spirit of reverence. As children, as grandchildren, as cousins, as nephews and nieces, we should seek to embrace the guiding light, the rich legacy, and not squander it. Hasta la vista, mom. As you join our sister Deborah, who, who predeceased you 20 years this year, and daddy on the other side. Mommy, 
ਮੰਮੀ ਲਾ 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 ਅਜ ਯੂ ਆਲ ਵੀ ਜੋ ਕਰੀ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਫਿਟ ਕੋਮਾ ਦੀ ਕੋਈ ਡਾਇਟੀ ਦੀ ਕੋਈ 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 ਐਟ ਆਊਟਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਕਰਾ ਮੇ ਅ ਸੋਲ ਰੈਸਟ ਇਨ ਪੀਸ ਵੀ ਲਵ ਯੂ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊ ਟੂ ਆਨਰ ਯਰ ਮੈਮਰੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ
privilege my hand to introduce to the platform this evening my senior pastor, Reverend Andal Bob. Let's welcome and come to the people who are going to the city. There are two items that we need to do before I speak. And uh, that is the third scripture reading. So the person who is doing Revelation chapter 21, 1 to 5, are you here? And then followed by Destiny Duncan and Sophia Chapman. A new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crime, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Thank you very much. I must comment on the eulogy. It is the finest eulogy that I've heard. this woman of faith. Thank you so much. I would like to ask Marina and Linda to please stand. Is Linda here? Please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for these people. Be a caregiver is to have a special gift. It is something that you have to do every day. And while we are living in the days where children are very quick to put their parents in retirement home. I make an appeal to you. I notice we have quite a, a mature audience here today. But to children, I appeal to you. I know that there are circumstances where placing your parents in a foster in a, in a retirement home might be the best thing. But try your best to take care of your parents because they took care of you. There is no greater blessing than to take care of your parents. Have them enjoy the surrounding and the environment in which they feel most comfortable. So I encourage you to do the best that you can in that area. I would like to direct your attention to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6 through 8 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6 through 8 It says, and I'm reading from the NIV version 
For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time of my departure is near. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who have longed for his appearing. For the next few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, I address you on the topic. I have finished my race. I have finished my race. On behalf of my family, I would like also to offer our sincere condolences to the Charles family on the passing of this great servant of the Lord. I also want to acknowledge the presence of the entire family here today, especially those who have come from abroad. Thank you. Time is one of the great gifts that God has given to the human family. At this very moment, we are all using the precious moments of that time. 115 people pass from time into eternity every minute. 115. That's almost 2 per second across the globe. It works out to just over 60 million people every year. Those figures means little to most of us here. And the reason why it means little is because we are not in this coffin. But while that might mean little to you at, that, at this point in time, I want to remind you that you and I, we are not going to eternally cheat that. The day will come when we will all save the rapture and the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will all lie silent in a coffin. I hope it could be one as expensive as this. But whether it is expensive or not, the fact remains that time will run out for all of us. Time, my friends, is our greatest currency. And we must be able to use that time wisely to make the best decisions possible, both for time and also for eternity. We all feel as though we will live forever. And the Bible does say that we hold eternity in our hearts. The Bible gives us the assurance that we are in fact eternal beings. The scripture tells us that we were made in the image and likeness of God. Isn't that so? And because God is eternal, we also are eternal. Because God is a creator by nature, we are also creators in the sense of making things happen. Why else would Christ go through all that he did for us if life ended with death? It is not logical. Jesus paid a particular price for us 
because he understood our value. And throughout all of human history, we find that some human beings do not value the lives of other human beings. I suppose that was from the very beginning and it will continue to the very end. Even our forefathers, Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, unfortunately this sense of violence still continues. But I want to remind you here today, while we are alive and we are well, that we need to consider not only the life that we presently live, but we need to consider what will happen after we die. Even on our small island now, because of the movement of technology and information, people are exposed to all kinds of philosophies. And today we have more people who are disbelieving the existence and presence of a God. And they are acting in a manner as though that there are no consequences for actions. But I want to remind you today that there are blessings and consequences for our actions. Writing at his imminent death, the Apostle Paul wrote by divine inspiration. Firstly, he said, I have fought a good fight. I would like to translate that today in honor of Sister Charles to say that she has fought a good fight. She has fought a long fight. Ninety-three is quite a number. I wonder if any of the siblings have the confidence that you're going to make 93. Any one of you? You know, great is your hope. But you come from good stuff. Your father lived long, and your mother lived long, and God bless you, I hope you live long, and you have a fruitful life. I too would like to live long. My dad lived until he was 87, and out of those 87 years, 50 of those years, he was an alcoholic. So, I put a little reason together, and I said, if all of that alcohol and nicotine was in the system for 50 years, and he still lived to 87, I feel I'm going to make 100. <laughs> Unless, like the old people say, is the alcohol that preserve them? <laughs> life is a wonderful thing. And life must be lived in such a way that when death comes, it is a celebration. I want to remind you here today that this service is really a celebration. We should really have some, we should have had some more, we should have some param here today. Because we are honoring a great lady who lived a great life. We have a sense of confidence that we know where she is. This family has all the confidence that for her to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I trust that that confidence that you have in her is the same confidence you have in yourself because she has taught you the way. The term fought a good fight is symbolic of all of the challenges and testings that we go through in this life of opportunities. You know, nothing is given to us on a silver platter.
especially the old heads who had to work and they had to find a way to make ends meet, they were not sitting down to wait for any inheritance. They were making things happen in the difficult days. I remember my own parents working in the estate in Cedar Hill for Center Day. One Center Day, they would have told me. In those days, there were no radio and television, so they had 12 of us, of which I'm the last. I always tell people I almost didn't make it. <laughs> Thank God that there was no TV, otherwise I wouldn't be here. But the value of work and the value of developing yourself is a value that we must never lose. Life requires great effort. It requires strength and it requires enduring will. And if we are to be achievers in any field in endeavor, we need the tenacity to keep going no matter what. Sister Charles is an example of that. The experience of winning against all odds is referred to as fighting the good faith. We are all presently in some kind of battle, hopefully to emerge victorious. No doubt, Sister Charles, as she is affectionately called in this church, would have had her difficult days as many in her generation. But through it all, she kept the faith. Through it all, she never turned her back on the Lord Jesus Christ. Through it all, she made a commitment that no matter what will happen to her, she will hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the kind of faith that the Bible talks about. And that is the kind of faith that is available for us right here and right now. Sister Charles has left a legacy of faithful commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and faithful commitment to the open Bible family in Princess Town. She will never be forgotten. You know, one of the things that we are doing now at the church, we are in the process of moving from Ayers Avenue. We are moving across the tram line. We are building a 1,500-seater building there, and that will be a testimony to the 60-odd years of faithful ministry of this church. One of the things that I plan to do very early when we move across is to have a service in memory of all of the saints who have passed through this church. And if we could possibly get pictures of these individuals so that the present congregation will understand that what we would have had and what we would have built, it was not just us, but it was the labor and the time and the prayer and the finance of all of these people who have gone ahead. What a great opportunity to be a part of a great organization. So we will not forget those who have gone before. And Sister Charles will be one of those who we will affectionately remember. She was from, as Eden mentioned, she was from the original drill hall days. Those days I only hear about. Fortunately for me, I got saved on the 17th of February 1981 through the ministry of this very church. On the 17th of February, we come in a couple of weeks, it will make it 38 years that I'm serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the ministry of this church. And I want to say this, that is what the church does. The church is able to take ordinary individuals and through the teaching of the word and faithful people who teach in Sunday school and baptism class and, and all of the other things that we do, we can cement the lives of people 
so that they can make life-changing decisions that in, in fact changes the lives of people for the future. The church is alive and well across Trinidad and Tobago. We continue to preach this gospel because we know it is the greatest message in the world. It is only the church of the Lord Jesus that can transform the human heart as evidence in the life of Sister Charles. So she has fought a good fight. Secondly, she has finished her course. She has finished her race. She ran hard. She ran long. She ran well. And she ended up a winner. You see, the race is not for the swift. But it's for those who endure to the end. I want to say to you today, if there was a time in your life that you started this race, made the commitments of your life, at one time in your life, and you were all excited about serving the Lord. You might have even thought that you would have been a preacher. I thought that one of his sons, when he came on here and he started, I said, maybe he missed his calling. <laughs> but because of circumstances, difficulty, trial, and most of all, because of people, Here's a pastor, pastor several churches, and I'm preaching now for more than 30 years. We were talking about last night, and those guys said, Pastor, 30 years? You don't even look like 30 years. Thank you for the compliment. I know you're just making me feel good. <laughs> but you know this gospel, is really, really significant. And maybe at one time in your life, you had all of that hope and dream that you are going to serve the Lord no matter what. But you allowed the circumstances and the difficulties and the challenges to cause you to lose your faith. After preaching and pastoring for many years, I have found in my experience that most people who lose faith in Christ throw up their hand in despair. It is because they have allowed other people to influence those decisions. If you once walked with the Lord and you were in this race, for whatever reason you dropped out of this race, the Bible says that the gifts and calling of God is without repentance. In other words, as long as you are alive, the voice of Jesus keeps calling you, come back and return unto me, the shepherd and bishop of your soul. This race is an important race. This race is a race that is going to have a timely end. But this race is a race that you need to be involved in. And you need to get back yourself in this race. Get back into that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I love to preach evangelistically. And whenever I have the opportunity to preach evangelistically, I always ask the audience, what bad thing will happen to you if you give your life to Jesus? Name one bad thing that will happen to you. And of course, nobody can name any bad thing that can happen to you. But if you begin to list the good things, that are going to happen to you if you give your life to Jesus. You can write on a whole book. Because when you are in Christ, my friends, and when you are in this race, 
you have the opportunity to enjoy the best of two worlds. The best in this world and the best in the world to come. That is why Jesus said, Come unto me, all you the heavy laden, and I am going to give you rest. That rest is available. That blessings is available for you today if you run this race. So we all have this life that we need to complete. We must ensure that we are doing what we were intended to do. If not, we would have missed the whole point of life. To live your whole life, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years, and not be able to come into a right and rich relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, is to miss the point of life. You know, I've buried about more than 200 people over the years. Had the opportunity to preach at funerals all over this country as well as abroad. I have never seen anybody put a house in a coffin, have you? I've never seen anybody put an expensive vehicle into the coffin. But I have seen some strange things. I've seen some people put some strange things in here. But whatever you choose to put in here, it doesn't go further than six feet. But if you put your life in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go not just six feet, but you are going for all eternity to be with him. So she has finished her course. She has lived her life. The Bible outlines the general course that life should take. It should be one of faith. Your life should express faith. Do you know that everything that you do that God will judge you on is on the line of faith. That is why the Bible says that God has given to every man a measure of faith. And he expects you to use that faith based on the knowledge that you have available. So life should be one of faith. Life should be one of family. And life should be one of legacy. Finally. The Bible tells us, the Apostle Paul said, I have kept the faith. And I can say today of Sister Charles, she has kept the faith. How many of us here today can say with a degree of confidence, I have kept the faith? My address here today is not to Sister Charles. My address here is to you. Because she would have wanted me to say what I'm saying here. She would have wanted for one last time, through her influence, that you would hear this gospel and respond to this gospel. Because it is, it is very significant that you do that, because it is not simply a matter of, I do not believe and I am not going to give my life to Christ. There are consequences for those decisions. life, people have difficulties and many people give up. Some who have come to faith in Christ give up this most valuable possession. But there is a reason for this. People give up because they place themselves in a position where they stop hearing the value and the importance of the Lord Jesus Christ. say to you today that if you do not find yourself in a place where you regularly hear God's word your one and most important decision today is to decide to put yourself in a place where you will hear God's word because faith coming by 
hearing and hearing God's word. You can tell me, and this is true, every time you come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the word of God is preached, you feel something in your heart. You feel something in your spirit. You feel as though this is what I should be in. This is what I should be experiencing. And many times we leave a funeral service or a wake and we say, you know what? I really need to get back my life in order. Do we not say that? But what happens? The moment you leave the environment and you enter into another environment, the thought leaves your mind. And that is a dangerous thing. Because if you continue doing that, the day will come when you will be caught dead with all of these good intentions. Good intentions are good. But good intentions does nothing unless those intentions are brought into reality. So she has kept the faith. The Bible says, and now there is laid up for her a crown of righteousness. Christ is offering a crown of righteousness for all those who would love his appearing. This crown has been spoken of in the Bible on many occasions. Our dear sister will receive a crown in that appointed time. For now, she is asleep in Christ. And she is waiting, along with all of the saints, since the cross of Christ, she is waiting for a particular sound. Both of my parents who came through this church, both of them got saved in their 70s. Not something that normally happened with Muslim families. But by the grace of God, they found the Lord Jesus Christ, and when I saw the change in their lives, after all these years, I saw a sudden change in both of my parents. I said, oh, something happened here. This is not normal. Added to the fact that every night on my bed, I would hear both of them praying for me and calling my name. And I believe that I today having received the Lord Jesus Christ, is a direct result of the prayers of my parents. So they too will receive their crown of righteousness. And that crown of righteousness is available to everybody right here and right now. The Bible says that as she, along with all of those, we wait we wait, they wait, until we hear the trump, the, the sound of the trumpet call. The Bible says, the dead in Christ will rise first. That is our hope that the church has. Then we who are alive shall be, shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort yourselves, comfort one another with these words. I'm saying to this family that this is not the end. If you go the way that she has gone, you are going to see her again. I have the hope and confidence that I will see my parents again. Because that is what the Bible promises. For now, it is a goodbye, but one day to come, there will be a hello. So this crown of righteousness is available to all of us. I think that the greatest thing that you can do today as the family and as people who are attending this service as I close, the greatest thing that you can do is to give your life to Christ and create for yourself a wonderful legacy of faith that can be emulated by others. Today we say farewell to the stalwart of her faith. She may not have served in established leadership positions, 
but she played her part in the church and in the kingdom of God and she played it well. I say to her, well done, the good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. But I also would like to give you the opportunity today to respond to the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads and be right where you are? I'm not going to ask for a lift of hands or anybody to stand. But I am going to ask you to respond to this message and to respond to the love of the Lord Jesus that is available and is being extended here to you today. The Bible says, with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made to salvation. The scripture tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Come unto me, Jesus said. Today, if you would like to respond to the Lord Jesus, pray this prayer after me and invite the Lord Jesus in your heart. Lord Jesus, I have heard your word today. I do believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I do believe that you shed your blood on the cross for me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, both by state and by act. I cannot save myself. But Lord Jesus, I ask you today, on the basis of your word, to forgive me of my sins. I invite you, Lord, into my heart. Save me. Change me. Help me to serve you until I see you. And make me a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible says that you have passed from death unto life. And the reason for that it's not because of anything that you have done. The Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not of works, least any man should boast. It is a gift for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Said, I sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Amen. We're going to continue as we conclude the service. What a and then, is it well with your soul? And then I'm going to give some instructions as how we're going to view the audience, the congregation will have an opportunity to view. I will give you instructions. And then the final view will be with the family, with a family prayer. And then we close and we go to the cemetery a few minutes down the road. This is the village.
not saying the same one in this same upbeat. And I think that we should dance for Dolly. Yes. I think that we will miss an opportunity if we don't dance for Dolly today. Stand with me and let's just sing it. This is a celebration. A celebration. Come on. Could you get the stage lights so that they'll be able to see the, the 
slideshow while they are viewing.
there will be challenges and grievances. Today, I want to say to this family, not only are you going to bury your mother, but I would like you to bury any grievance that you might have had with each other. I want you to bury any negative past that you might have had. Today is, your, is a great opportunity to let disagreements, grievances, problems of the past, do not let it continue. So, between now and the time that we cover this body, I would expect that if anyone have a grievance against anyone, you extend a hand, you don't have to say anything. You just say to each other, the past is gone, and now we live for the future. And that should be the end of it. You say, Pastor, is it so easy? Of course it is, because it is a decision. Join your hands together as we pray our final prayer. Could the congregation stand with us? Father, today in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this legacy. We thank you, Lord, for the life and legacy of Sister Charles. Thank you for this wonderful and great family. Lord Jesus, I pray today that your grace and your peace will be upon each of them. I declare today Lord, that at this service, that everything negative that has gone by would be also buried. I declare a new horizon. I declare a new vesta. I declare a new relationship. I declare today a new reconciliation in the name of Jesus. And I declare today that this family will be a united one. That they will be there for each other. That they will continue in their relationship. Lord, we know that everything after everything is said and done, the only thing that remains is relationships. So I decree today, Lord, that the siblings would be strong. The in-laws would be strong. Lord, the grandchildren will be strong. The great-grandchildren will be strong. And the name of the child's family will continue to create a legacy for the future. I bless you today. I thank you for each of the members of the family and for each person at home represented here today. We ask that your blessings and your grace be upon us. And we thank you for this evening proceedings. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody says? Amen. So the family, spend the last few minutes. If you would like to place a rose or whatever you like to do. So we're going to be spending the next five minutes here. And then we're going to go down to the cemetery. Uh, everyone, the cemetery is just about three or four minutes drive down the road. You are all invited.
Um, the other one. The The best place that you could be. This, this is your legacy. It's a time of rejoicing. It's a time of celebration. But I also know it is also a sad time because this is the last. But you have the memories, you have the pictures, you have the video. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in His wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for they rest from their labors. Let's pray. Almighty God, we do at this time thank you again for the glorious life of Sister Charles. Thank you, Lord, for all of the children, the in-laws, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, and the generations that will come out of them. We pray today that as a soul rests in peace, that you would encourage, you will comfort the family. Let them know instinctively that it will get better with time. And we thank you and we commit her body to you today. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen, amen and Amen. Can I die? I live
Can you get your attention, please? Attention, please. Attention, please. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Hello. Attention, please. Okay. Um. We have just witnessed the interment of what your mother, uh, Dorothy Charles. We have saluted her with a great send of service in keeping with what she would have liked. We have eulogized her. We have sung her best songs. We attempted to dance like she danced during church time. What we are called upon to do now is to ensure that her legacy is not squandered. That all that she stood for, all that she was against, we would not remember. She was a lady of love. And I want all of you to take home that message with you today. Brothers, sisters, cousins, in-laws, well wishers, even the professional mourners among you, if you exist. <laughs> I want you to go home rejoicing as we are rejoicing now. It's not the end of Dorothy Charles. It's a new beginning. The new beginning is personified in all of us. And I want you to do so. Honor her, honor her memory. Continue to give support to us. It's going to be a difficult period, but with your support, each day will be a better day. For those of you who are available and to make it, we are asking you to join us for a repast at a home situated in Azurite Crescent Union Hall. Thank you for coming and please do enjoy your evening. Buddha. Thank you.
Sai menino, sai menino, 